I think the whole idea around what an IDP or internal developer platform is, is still kind of growing. So just to give you an example, years ago, I created a CLI, a command line tool that was wrapped around the AWS SDK uh, and pretty much just exposed a few commands. Now I built this for the developer team because they pretty much said, Mike, I don't want to learn the whole AWS SDK. I don't need all these different commands. I just need what I need and that's it. I need some type of uh, platform or interface that I can just run a couple of commands. Here's what I can do and boom, that's it. So that's what I did. I built a CLI, wrapped it in an AWS SDK, gave it to them and they were happy. That's a form of an IDP, I would say, because an IDP can be anything from a GUI to a CLI to an API to YAML, whatever your team needs to make their life easier to interact with the underlying platform. Now, when we think about IDPs, I would say right now we're seeing a lot of GUI based tools. Okay. And I would say the two that are probably most talked about from an open source perspective, backstage from an enterprise perspective, port. Now I believe port is free for up to 15 people and then there's paid support and, and all that jazz. So it all depends on what direction you want to go in. You know, it's, do you want more open source or do you want, you know, something that's paid and supported again, entirely up to you. But in this video, what I want to do is I just want to briefly go through one of the features that port has to pretty much give you like that button click in terms of, Hey, developer team or internal engineer team, here's the button, click it. It goes and it does a thing. All right, so from an enterprise perspective, as in port, you can use it for free, but there's also paid version. You can get, uh, well, it's up to 15 seats for free and you can get support and all that good stuff, which it's interesting uh, to be able to have a little bit of both here. They have a comparison to backstage as well, which is nice. And yeah, I mean, I definitely love the solution for that GUI style IDP. Okay, so you could sign up for free. Once you sign up for free, uh, you'll see a portal that kind of looks like this. I already have some stuff in here, so you're not gonna see this, but it'll kind of look like this, okay? And there are a lot of different things that you can do in here and a lot of different things that you can manage from clusters to Argo projects to pods and just about everything in between. But, oh, there's also this builder thing that's really cool, so you can get a visual of what you want your whole build process to look like. You can implement your data sources. As you can see, I got a couple of clusters in here, any type of automation. But what I wanna focus on is this self-service capability, okay? So when you click create here, or action, you're gonna give it a title, so just test, okay? You're gonna say what type of operation it is. So a day two, that's gonna be management, delete is delete, and create is usually day one. You're then gonna choose a blueprint. So let's say we were gonna like, for example, do some type of workload, okay? Next, you can pretty much leave this blank. And then you have the back end, okay? So what does this back end mean? Well, your back end is what you wanna do in terms of running a pipeline, creating something, send, it looks like you could even send a Slack message. But the point being is this, and this is something that I wanna drive home because this is very important. With an IDP, the back end, what you're trying to do should already be created. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let me just exit out of this and I'm going to show you one that I already have set up. It's going to look the same. Okay. So, again, like remember, we saw the basic details thing, we saw the user form in the back end. Now, notice my invocation type is run a GitHub workflow. Okay. And then I'm pointing to where my GitHub action exists, okay? So if I pull that up here and notice, I have this pipeline, this pipeline already exists, okay? And this is just to create an AKS cluster. Now, why am I telling you this? Because as the, plat as the platform engineer, you're responsible for building this, okay? This is your responsibility here. As the internal engineer or developer using the platform, your responsibility is in any of this and it isn't any of this. Your responsibility is, hey, platform engineer, you got that button for me? Certainly do. All you gotta do is log into port, 
click this create button right here and click execute and boom done so the internal engineer developer they now have this button they say oh i need to create an aks cluster here's the aks creation button click boom done your job however as the platform engineer is to configure all this so as we can see i've got my pipeline configured you can set up some payloads in here if you want to as well you don't have to any permissions in terms of who has access to edit this and change it and update it etc which is great but once that pipeline is created or that that invocation type because again you got to create that and there's an example here again if you want to use it it's just to create an aks cluster you could find this code in the kubernetes real world course under the github workflows and then once that's done you have the ability to perform a particular action okay so if i for example click create and i click execute what this is going to do is i'm going to click view details and then this will give me the ability to go in and watch the creation process okay so we're going to see some logs here if we set that up some entities here but really what we care about is whether or not this is completed okay now once this is completed we then have the ability to know okay this button works now we can give this button to you know the internal engineer or developer and again they just get to come here and click the button and boom they're off to the races and you can do this for anything you know again if i go to here and i just i'm just gonna do this uh and then back end Whatever this is, if I'm running GitHub Actions, if I'm running Jenkins pipelines, GitLab pipelines, Azure pipelines, if I need to send a Slack message, whatever it is, as long as you have something created. So if you have a GitLab pipeline created, if you have a GitHub Action created, all you have to do is just go in here and simply point to it and that's it. So from an enterprise perspective, port is very nice because it's just kind of there. Uh, just keep in mind, because this is something that I thought in the beginning, I'm not using port to build the back end. I'm using port to point to the back end, back end being a pipeline, for example.